Hello, my dear students, and welcome to week eight overview. During this week, we're going to talk about the population size. So technically, what does that mean? That the number of individuals in the population at a given time, we have the sudden and dramatic decreases in population size can indicate an unhealthy population headed towards extinction. Ecologists often use sampling techniques to estimate population size. We're also going to study in detail about the passenger pigeon that was once North America's most abundant bird. Hunting drove them to extinction in less than 100 years. We're also going to talk about the population density. So technically what we're going to talk about that the measure of how crowded population is, larger organisms generally have lower population densities. So we are going to differentiate between the concept of low population density and high population density. So low population density, more space, more resources, finding mates can be difficult. High population density, finding mates is easier, tends to be more competition, more infectious diseases, and more vulnerability to predators. Then, we have the population distribution, so how organisms are arranged within an area. We have three types of distributions. We have the random, uniform, and clump distributions. So firstly, the random distribution, which means that organisms arranged in no particular pattern, as you can see here from this image. Then moving to the second one, which is the uniform distribution that organisms evenly spaced out. So as you can see here that they are evenly spaced between each other. Then we have the clump distribution which is organisms grouped near resources, most common distribution in nature. Then we're going to move and talk about the age structure. So relative number of organisms of each age group within population can be used to predict future population growth. So for example, here we have the pre-reproductive age, product, reproductive age, and post-reproductive age. So male and female, male and female, male and female. So for example, here, mostly young, which are the growing, okay, the pre-reproductive age, this is the mostly. Then we have mix of young and old, which is the stable one, and those are the post-reproductive ages at the top. We have here mostly old, which is declining that technically post-reproductive ages at the top. And as you can see here, that the pre-reproductive ages are declining. Then we have the sex ratios, the proportion of males to females. Age structure diagrams give information about sex ratios, which technically is the gender ratio. So uh, for a species, the ideal sex ratio is 50 to 50. That means the uh, gender from male to female, female to male is 50 to 50. Then we have the birth and death rate. So a population relative birth and death rates, mortality uh, affects how it grows. We have the survivalship curves show how the likelihood of death varies with age. As you can see here in this graph that we have type 2, type uh, one and type three. And we have in the y axis, which is the number of survivorship, and then on the x axis, we have the um, age. So it also refers to the probability of an individual or a group of individuals surviving to a certain age or a certain stage in life. It was often used to, in the context of studying populations, particularly in the uh, biology. We have the survivorship curves can help to understand the patterns of survival and mortality within population over time. Also can be influenced by various factors such as age, environmental conditions, and genetic traits. Also, this analysis is valuable in studying the population dynamics that can provide insights into life's expectancy and morality rates. Also, we're going to talk about immigration and immigration. So in addition to birth and death, uh, population growth is affected by immigration and migration, individuals moving into and out of a population.